But you might be like, well, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. And Dave Ramsey would say, well, when you spend your whole freaking paycheck on things you don't need, that makes you stupid. Wow. What did I just get myself into? So in today's video, we're going to be talking about five steps from Dave Ramsey on how to get rich, how to become wealthy, Dave Ramsey's five steps. Now I utilize these steps to become a millionaire by the time I was 28 years old. That right before was just a little snippet of what you're going to get. Make sure you hit the like button on this video right over there to send this out into the YouTube algorithm. Let's dive right into this video. The first step is, in Dave's own voice, you must make a written plan. Nobody ever got rich without trying to do so. Nobody wins at the game of money without a plan, and you're not the exception. And that's the truth. It's an ironic thing that we constantly say to ourselves, and this is what I always did, that I would do things once I got money. I would save once I got money. I would invest once I got money. Once I had some money to freaking spend, then I'd make a budget. And as long as you make the lack of money an excuse, I found that you will always continue to have lack of money as an excuse. And so, there's really no excuse in our world, especially when you're on a very strict income level that is the same every single month. There's no excuse to not put a budget together, to not say, this is how much I'm going to spend on my rent or my mortgage. This is how much I'm going to spend on my groceries. This is the five things I'm going to cut out of my budget that are frivolous, that are going to free up an extra couple hundred or couple thousand dollars every month. Step number one, make a plan, make a budget because you can't hit your goal or your target of financial freedom or becoming wealthy unless you first have a plan. Step number two is get out of debt, stupid! Right? And that's being facetious in a Dave Ramsey's voice trying to be an actor, trying to be an actor. And he says, get out of debt because the most powerful wealth building strategy that you have or tool that you have is your present income. But you never have any money if you're always spending more money than you have. And I have to be honest, I didn't even get a credit card until after I was already a millionaire. I didn't get one until about six months ago. And the only reason I got one is because I fly so much back and forth between Maui and the mainland. I figured I might as well get a couple free flights. That's the only thing that I use it for. So. What happened was I decided that I was not going to ever spend money that I didn't have. And I think that especially when you are young and you're trying to start to get ahead financially, the biggest pitfall that I see and that most young people have is because we aren't taught anything really about credit cards and about debt and about money, we think it's harmless when it's not and it's going to set you back. So this is also one of his first baby steps is to get out of debt and the way that he suggests to do it is to start by the things with the highest interest. Start with the things that have the highest interest and get out of debt entirely and then say to yourself, I will be a lender and not a borrower. But you might be like, well, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. And Dave Ramsey would say, well, when you spend your whole freaking paycheck on things you don't need, that makes you stupid. Be a lender, not a borrower. The third step is to spend less than you make. Sounds absolutely rocket scientist level, I know. But that was why I never had any money and I would take it a step further. Two, some people spend more than they make. They make 2000 but they spend 2500 We just talked about that, we're getting out of debt. But then the next thing is to not only spend less than you make, but substantially less. So if you make $2,000, 
do the math. You are never going to get ahead in life if you keep spending 15 or 1800 of it. And you might be like, well, how do I live? Well, you might need to get roommates or you might need to go live with friends or family for a little while, or you might need to cut out 25% of your other expenses. The reality is if you do the math, you can't get ahead. You have to spend less than you make. It's just the reality of the situation. You have to spend less than you make. It doesn't matter whether you make $100,000 a month or $1,000 a month, you can't get ahead unless you start doing it. And so the thing that changed my life is I learned that Sir John Templeton, famous investor, he would save 40 to 50% of his income. And I heard that when I had zero dollars in savings and I would tell myself, I'll save once I have more money. Yeah, I can do all these principles that Dave talks about. I get it, Dave Ramsey helped a lot of people, but I'll, I can't do this because I don't have enough money. I stopped making that as an excuse and I said, I'm gonna start saving 40% of my money. And the crazy thing has happened, my income hadn't even increased. But all of a sudden, six months later, I had my first $10,000 saved. Then I had my first $25,000 saved. Then I, and it just kept growing and the momentum builds. When you put a stake in the ground, you say, this is the way it's gonna be. And guess what the worst thing that happens? The worst thing that'll happen when you save money is you're still gonna have the money in your bank account. Psst. Before we get to the next one, if you're still with me, make sure you hit the like button on this video right over there to send this out into the YouTube universe, into the YouTube algorithm. Make sure you hit the like button on the side right over there. And comment down below, I love Dave Ramsey. That will help the YouTube algorithm. Comment down below, I love Dave Ramsey. And let's get back to the video. Number four, Dave says, don't be stagnant. Guess what the greatest study I ever found was? 100% of the people that don't save money don't have any money. And it's the truth, but I want to take it a step further because a lot of times what happens is people will listen to Dave and they'll get stuck just on savings. And yeah, maybe in 50 years, everything will work out if you stay at your current level, but I want to one up the don't be stagnant. Cause if you look at Dave, Dave's biggest wealth building tool, arguably is not his principles, Yes, his principles have allowed him to keep, preserve, and multiply a lot of his money, definitely. But Dave has an ever-growing income, and he has a scalable income. He has a leverage business that other people and other systems, he has a radio show syndicated all over the world. He's focusing also on serving more of the marketplace at his need. And so he's making more money. His income is not stagnant. So you can follow all these steps, but don't forget about not making your income stagnant. Literally pull out a piece of paper right now, pull out a piece of paper just like this, or you can use an index card just like this and write on the index card, what is your financial goal? Now there's three types of financial goals. And a number one is an A-type goal. That's a goal you've already done. That's like, I wanna make $60,000 a year. Well, how much do you make? I make $60,000 a year. That's not a goal. B is a goal you think you know how to do. I can do, I wanna do 25 push-ups. Well, how many can you do now? 20. Come on, bro, it's five more. That's not a big deal. It's a, it's a goal that you think you can do. If everything works out, yeah, you could do it. A C-type goal is a goal you do not know how to do. A C-type goal is to double your income. A C-type income is to say, I make $1,800 a month. I wanna make $1,800 in additional money. On top of what I make, I want my side income, my side business, my side hustle to make as much as my full-time job. That's a C-type goal. Now, the point of a financial goal is not necessarily what you get, it's who you become in the process. You're gonna learn new skills, you're gonna have more confidence, and you're gonna have more freedom because you're gonna have more money available. So pull out a piece of paper, clearly define what is your C-type financial goal, and don't be stagnant with your income. It's your greatest wealth building tool when you utilize all the other steps before. Last but not least, this is mi favorite. It's uh, be generous. So 
money makes you more of what you already are. And this one thing that I love about Dave is that he always talks about being generous. Money makes you more of what you already are. So when I was broke, I was afraid of money because I thought money would make me greedy or bad or something like that. Then when I decided that I was going to be wealthy, by the way, you have to make that decision. It's one thing to decide not to be broke. That's not that hard. Just save a little bit of money and you won't be totally broke. But that's not going to help you live your dream life. You have to decide that you will be rich. You have to say, I am going to be rich. Comment that down below. I am going to be rich. Comment that down below. I'm going to be rich. You have to declare it. And then all these weird belief systems will come up. Oh, you can't do it, but you're going to be greedy. And, and those are the ones I had. You're going to be greedy. Guess what? The coolest thing about having money is not that I have a very comfy mattress and that I have a really beautiful home with epic ocean views in Maui, which I do have. Just kidding. But seriously, the coolest thing is being able to be generous. Like, honestly, one of my favorite memories with money is I went into a yoga class and I overheard a teacher. I'd only been to one of their classes. I didn't know them. I'd never personally met them, never shook their hand. And they had uh, lymphomic cancer and lymphatic cancer would be the correct way to say it. And they didn't have any money. And so they couldn't afford the operations for it to remove all the tumors out. They were having a tough time with insurance because they had already had some previous surgeries. And so they weren't able to get the operations done. And I overheard that they had that cancer and I went and I approached them just to like, uh, cause it like, moved me to tears that this person was there teaching every day and they had like that serious of cancer and they didn't even tell anyone. I found out through another teacher. and. When I approached the individual, that's when they told me they couldn't get all the operations. And I, I didn't even, I just met them literally on the spot when I introduced myself. And I was able to give the money to get the surgery done. I just met them. I was like, hold on, be right back. And I went to my car and I was able to cut them the check. How much is it? All right, cool. I didn't even know them. See, these are the things you can do with money. Money makes you more generous. Money makes you more of what you already are. And so if you want any reason to be wealthy in life, because you do need a reason, you need a motivating factor to follow all these previous steps. And if you want one, here's it, here it is. Do it for somebody else. Become rich for your mom or your dad or your children or your unborn children. Be rich so you can help single mothers who can't afford a car and they have to take the bus to work and they have kids that have to get to school. Do it for the single mom who is in an abusive relationship with, with a nobody that shouldn't be allowed to have kids, but they don't have the money to fight in the court system for 100% custody against an abusive father, and so it's gonna the custody will get split like 60-40. Do it for them, Set up, get rich enough to get a fund together so you can fund their legal fees. Think about something bigger than yourself and you'll find a motivating factor. So this is Jake Ducey with jakeducey.com. Thank you for watching I Love Prosperity. These are Dave Ramsey's five steps to becoming wealthy to getting rich. If you dig this, make sure you hit the like button on the side right over there to send this out into the YouTube algorithm. I truly believe that if more people have a positive relationship with money and create a more prosperous life for themselves with more financial freedom, this world will be a better place. This is Money's the number one cause of divorce. The stress-related illnesses are higher than ever. I think most of them are probably work and money related. We can change that. And when you hit like on this video, you send this out into the YouTube algorithm so more people see it. If 10 million people see this, I truly believe it will have a huge shift. We need to start to treat money seriously. So make sure you hit the like button to send this out into the YouTube universe so more people see this. And then hit the subscribe button, the bell notification right over there. Bell notifications, what notifies you for new videos. Even if you've already subscribed, just double check. Have you actually hit the bell notification? I'm not really sure. And then right there down below is iloveprosperity.com. 
It's my free success hypnosis that I created to start to grow my income. That's the biggest problem, grow your income. And if you apply all these other steps of saving and investing and spending less than you make and your income keeps growing, dude, you're gonna become very wealthy quickly. And so I created a free success hypnosis to start to reprogram my mind for thoughts of prosperity to grow my income. And it's right there down below. It's iloveprosperity.com. So you can go ahead and check out my free income increasing hypnosis and just let me know what amazing results happen to you when you start to use it. iloveprosperity.com. Have a fantastic day. Thank you for watching this video. I'll talk to you soon.